Greetings, everyone. We're back around the table today, and we've got a little treat of three brand new for 2018 Ruik or Rake Knives. But first, let's kick it off with what we have in our pockets. Joseph! Today... Somewhere, and then maybe. Same more. <laughs> Playing again with the Emerson ZTs. The 620. Yep. Same old, same old. It's been the same three <laughs> knives. <laughs> Um, M390 has just got my attention way too hard, so hard to put down. It's fair. Mm -hmm. Definitely fair. It's close to the tactical mobile blower that you were rocking last week. Yes. Uh, I am carrying the carbon fiber Pardue. Ew. Ew. What do you yeah. have on that? What is on that? <laughs> that That's great. Right. Schmutz upon schmutz. Were you, like, cutting grass with it? I actually think I may have cutting grass with this. Maybe weeds. Whatever, it's Sunday. <laughs> Hands off flowers. So, yeah, I'm huh. um, rocking the 530. It actually was Joseph's once upon a time, but I traded him for something that he doesn't carry anymore. He should carry that knife. I still carry it from time to time. I still but, miss this knife, but... Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's what I'm carrying today. Got my ZT456 again there. Yay. Yay. Haven't seen this guy in your pocket for a while. Yeah, rotate around a bit, but I only have a few mainstay staples. It's, it's heavy, so yeah. that's part of it. You've Isn't gotten into some chaparrales that are lighter weight knives, yeah. and you've gotten spoiled with some of that lately. So, mm -hmm. well, what are you rocking? Since this is the game we're playing, this is what I'm rocking today. Oh, <laughs> snap. Good job. <laughs> yeah. I figured. So, in the theme of tonight, this is going to come up. In the wise advice of Advanced Knife Bro, if you baton with a <laughs> thumb disc... You will break your thumb disc. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me at least. So preemptively remove right your thumb disc. <laughs> yeah, that's the lesson you need to take Before Matonic. Of course it's, that's the yeah, lesson. Naturally. It's a triad lock. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. You All can right. do a lot of things with it. The reason you brought this is because it looks so similar to something we're rocking tonight. That's exactly mm -hmm. it. Which, actually, you've also picked up. Yeah, let's, let's get the show All underway. Right, start yeah, off with that. So, yeah, first one we'll jump into is this guy. It is the model P852-B. Let's get the zoom in. we got some model numbers as well yeah, as some yeah. steel numbers. Did people bring all the calipers and the measurements and the scales that they needed to bring tonight? Yeah, my scale. I actually am not sure because the bag is very, uh, but we'll take for a minute. Anyway, all right, this is it. We got 1428 Sandvik, and that's been a staple in all the rake knives, and we're going to try to call them rake knives, even though we all really want to call them rook knives. We should try our best. So, what model? 852? Yeah. It looks like a mini Spartan. It does. The big reason why, yeah. It's the big reason why I bought it, is because I like the Spartan, but it's kind of a pain in the ass to carry. It's a little ridiculous for in the pocket. Yeah. Yeah. It does a decent job of hiding in the pocket, but you don't really need that for everything. Spartan else. compared to what? My ZT? Like, <laughs> seriously? <laughs> well, it's a relatively I thin carry knife. Purdue's and Osborne. Oh, yeah, no, no doubt. I'm not saying that it's light or anything else like that. What I'm saying is that for its size, yeah. it does a surprisingly good job of getting into your pocket and not being constantly like knocking against you and stuff like that. Yeah, I think Nigel's thinking the same. Oh, maybe not. But uh, closed width. It's a very wide knife too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's Notice. going. It's whatever pocket you put in. That's the only thing I'm going in that pocket. Yeah, it takes up a lot of room. Whereas this is a lot more economical. Yeah, a lot easier to carry. So, what's your favorite thing about the knife? Um, the fact that they made a Spartan that has a flipper. <laughs> so if you like your recurve, you like your thick blade. I, I like both of those things. I like the fact that it's G10. Um, the 14C28 Sandvik is nothing to uh, sneeze at in comparison. And again, yeah. price, price point for 1428 Sandvik. <laughs> yep. um, I, I want to say 6595 um, Yep, yep. Uh, Canadian. The Canadian yeah. MSRP on, on And because we're in Canada, we're going to use Rook's website and... 6595 is their Canadian website, so that's what we're going to work with on tonight's MSRP. So, as far as a grip size goes, yeah. uh, it fits you pretty good. You're liking the grip on that. It fits me basically like a glove. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if I get back on it and I get a little like pistol-y with it, my finger still falls on the flat here, and it fits really comfortably. Um, Surprisingly enough... It's nice three fingers for me in the choil, and I think he rests up on the end there, and it's still really, really comfy even in my hands. Okay, because I was <laughs> watching some reviews, and the guy said even for an extra large hand, he thought that the pinky would be 
So I, if it was rounded instead of having a bit of that point there, I would like it better. It wouldn't be as much, but the little bit of the point I could see being an issue after a Rest. bit of usage. Yeah. But he was saying that even for an extra large, you would probably like it. Now, for me, it's almost like a weird halfway in between. I can get it in that grip. Very mm -hmm. rarely am I using that full baseball yeah, grip. Same. You're mm -hmm. using... And then it's not quite big enough for my pinky to hang off of. So this is actually, like, I find it really traps my positioning on this one and what I can yeah. do. So I'm not actually a huge fan of the grip on this one. I'm going to be honest, this was an impulse buy on the idea that it reminded me of a spark. Yeah. That was yeah. more my concern than actually usage. I'm kind of in between Paul and Dennis here. It's in a really weird, awkward state for me um, if I'm going into a like a kind of a forward saber grip, then it, it lines up a little bit more nicely, but this, this is the weird, awkward Nigel zone. Uh, <laughs> basically, my pinky rests right on that little nubbin, so right there, it That's it right, it's a nubbin. It's a nubbin. nubbin. It's weird. He's rubbing the nubbin. <laughs> Unfortunately so. But I like the uh, the milling patterns and the scales, and it feels very comfortable in this forward grip. Yep. Um, I like that it has that secondary lock, too. <laughs> it's a nice... Uh... As, as far as like a secondary lock goes, it's done right. I yeah. Say. Yeah. yeah. And we right haven't talked about it yet. Thumb up. Yeah. 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 That's what they call it. It's yeah. just the little bit of jumping up at the top there slides forward, um, sits in nice and flush. You don't even notice it. Com compare and contrast with the most obvious comparison would be uh, the auto lock or the lock mm -hmm. from uh, CRKT. Much better implemented. Yeah, um, I, I think so. And, and the design, you can't. We can't get a close up of the internals, and I don't know if there's any pictures out there of the internals right now. But I, I believe this is actually a smarter design, where it's a cutout of the liner, and when it's like in place, it's bumping into the thing. When you switch it up, it actually goes into a hole, and that's what's letting the liner release type okay. of thing. Nice. Um, I think it's a, a a smarter way to do a double lock. Yeah. Um, if you feel you need a double lock, I personally I have don't. no need. I, yeah. well, I do appreciate I have, that it's optional. You don't have to engage it every time mm -hmm. you open the knife, and it doesn't automatically do so. That's it. And yeah. I've never had an issue where I've accidentally engaged this one. Like, even with my lion steel, I was automatically engaging that secondary lock all the time. The only locks I really, really like on knives is some of the assisted stuff where it's kind of nice to have mm. so you know it will self-deploy. The barrages yeah, have yeah, spine them. lock, yeah. 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 Kind of like the child safety. Yeah. 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 This yeah, feels yeah. very similar to that. I wish a blur had one because it's mm. been known to go yeah. off yeah. on a hair trigger. That but, may or may not have happened This in my is a similar kind of just slide forward, slide back feeling to it. Yeah, you know the I mean? barrage that yeah. their yeah. safety is as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure it is. Um... So ergonomics, it, it's Depending 60 percent hits, it's 40 yeah. percent miss kind of thing on these. Well, guys. yeah, like as far as fit in the hand, I really, really like it. But as far as the ergonomics of usage, it's a knife that tends to tip forward and it's into kind of that pistol grippy pointing style, and I don't like those ergonomics of the usage. The ergonomics of the usage. Oh, yeah. yeah. That sounds, that sounds um, that sounds like those were a whole bunch of words that almost made a sentence. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds like either the title of a book or a peer-reviewed journal. Like that's <laughs> the ergonomics of usage. We all understand what you're talking about there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, liner lock. How do you guys, how do, I don't think we've ever really talked about it. Um, maybe we didn't. Did we do a locks video? No, we haven't done no. the locks video yet. What do you guys think about liner locks in uh, in general? I have no issue with them. Yeah. I yeah, don't mind them in, in lower end knives. I prefer frame locks and higher end stuff, but I don't for the the price you're paying for that. I don't yeah. know. And with the G10 overlay and the texture and the whole theme of this knife, like yeah. there's no way to uh, do it other than a no. It makes perfect sense. Lock at this point, point. Yeah. either that or a lock back in this particular instance, and that would just be silly on, on yeah. these guys, right? Yeah. Like, it's then you're a little too cold steel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pay the patent and get the, uh, like, subframe lock. Yeah, like that. you put a thumb disc on it that I got to remove before patelling it. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, it's serious. I mean, do appreciate that there is some toothiness to the liner, yeah. but it's not overbearing. It's mm -hmm. not chewing the hell out of your finger as you're using it. And it is tucked away nicely, but still fairly accessible. Like, I don't find I'm, like, struggling trying to find it when I'm closing that knife. So. Is it just me, or does this look like they plan to have thumb studs that stopped? I, that's yeah. exactly what I was thinking too, yes. <laughs> because yeah. like they have that nice little hinderer-style uh, cleft. 
Now, you, you do see on some knives where it's got a triangular bite here, and they kind of talk about it being good in a pinch grip. Yeah. So uh, you can see where this, instead of thumb studs or a stop pin or something like that, something they might go. be employing some sort of Maybe I suppose choke up pinch grip thing. Doesn't going feel on. doesn't feel particularly comfortable. No, but neither does the triangular slope that they do the their triangular. Too. <laughs> no, <laughs> but that's, I still think the triangular slope is going to feel more comfortable than that. I, I just wonder what prompted that particular aspect of the design. I wouldn't be surprised if in an early design there was some like stop pins that were you know doubling to look like thumb studs. Can we see a weight on this bad boy? You certainly can. Because that's one thing I'll dabble on. Um, it is skeletonized, I believe. Yes, it definitely is a skeletonized liner, which helps your weight cause, but... but the G10 even, is solid, right? 5.6. We are looking at 5.6 just three. over ounces. Yeah. Uh, so chunky. It is chunky, chunky. Um, and it's wide. Yeah, it takes up a lot of real estate in your pocket. For reference on weight, um, ZT is slightly heavier. Um, I know my Pardue doesn't even come close. <laughs> What's your ZT? So this Six. is 6.2. This feels lighter in the pocket because of the, how chunky that is. I think is. his is actually close. Oh, it's 6.2. So this is actually lighter than everything that we've got on the table tonight, except for my card view, which isn't a fair competition, yeah. right? I know. But this is a very wide knife, and in the pocket, you notice it. Uh, like a Griptilian, actually, is what I feel right. this would be in size when you're carrying it. You would have a very Griptilian type of... That's what you expect when to put it in the yeah, pocket is something similar to... There's that. definitely some volume taken up with Compared it. to a flat pancake of a Delica or an Endura or a Blur or a exactly. whatever type of thing. That's that's the feel I get. I think we're good on that. Um, do we want to dive into some of the off... Well, first of all, consistency on Rook. Really good, really smooth. Um, some of the very few inconsistencies. Do we want to get into that now or do we want to reveal what we've got going on? We're winging it? All right. <laughs> Let's continue on. We're, we're talking about Shooting some guns. Yeah. Shooting <laughs> some guns. All right. Super awesome polish on all the edges. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice polish. Um, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that it's that sandvik steel, and it takes a polish so easy. Yeah. 428. Like, it's better than 154 CM or, like, VG10 as far as actually, like, what kind of polish. Yeah. You can get it to gleam. Yeah. So I'm happy that that With break, a stropping by hand, you can get it to gleam. It's nice. Well, and even out of the factory. Yeah, they're putting some fantastic mirror edges on stuff that you don't see out of things that are two, three, four times its its price point. Yeah, with edges that are much, much rougher, and they can blame steel needs a toothier edge on blah blah blah. But when you're putting M390, that does not need a toothier edge. You <laughs> no. can gleam that thing, and there's a lot of companies who do not gleam. M390, yeah. like it deserves to be, type of thing, right? One hundred percent. So. So we like it. G10, good steel. Yeah. Do we want to talk about a few things that are less than awesome? Well, less than stellar. I was talking about the glimmering edge because there's also a huge negative when it comes to an edge on this knife. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that We can there. zoom in on that and maybe even lift it up to the camera, but where the recurve is on this particular knife... On the, um, just on the one side, too. Right here. Someone, someone got drunk. Someone got drunk and ground a knife that they didn't know how to recurve. Um, I don't know how many recurves are in the rake lineup, Yeah. but ultimately rake is being made by Senran Nu, which is being made Kershaw and uh, Steel Will and a whole bunch of stuff is being made by Senran Nu. Yeah. So how would you say that was made? Like, what would, what would you say probably caused that wobble in there? A sneeze. Um, well, I kind of... Uh, I hypothesized about it yeah. being a one-inch belt instead of a two-inch belt. And just catching the corner and of the belt. And catching the corner of the belt, and I've seen things like that where they're belt ground. And on a plain edge, you can get away with a two or a three or a four-inch edge. But with the recurve, maybe they were trying to use a one-inch edge, to, or one-inch one inch belt. Yeah. <laughs> That's the word. And using the whole flat of it instead of like using a corner of it well, or something like that. Yeah, grinding in on here and here and catching the edges of the flat instead of yeah. grinding it out by hand or using a rounded system or like a curved stone or something like that. They yeah. have to do it properly. Um, Even a rounded wheel or something like that to round out the, uh, the belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the only negative that you have about the knife? Just the, the grind? The grind, the only other thing that I have... Slight gripe with, and it's only in comparison to the other things we're going to show today. 
is this pocket clip is very grabby on the pocket, um, partially because of the G10 underneath. Yeah, and I don't think it has anything to do with the clip. I think it's the texturing on the G10, and there is no um, like yeah. milling. There's no sanding underneath. There's no compensation. It's just grippy as it's trying to pull out of your pocket. That's exactly right? it. So the only other thing that I complain about that clip with, and it's just a gripe for me because I like deep carry clips. And, and I wish there is a lot hanging out there. Yeah, it would be nice to have that as a deep carry. As of that. I, love, I like the knife. It, it fulfills the need that I bought it for, which was to look like a Spartan and not be a Spartan. <laughs> yeah, flipper, a little mini Spartan. <laughs> yeah. uh, skeletonizing, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five holes on the off-liner side. Uh, the liner side has looks like three holes, one major one here and then two. I'm not 100% sure. We haven't disassembled this one um, yet. <laughs> yet. Uh, thrust ball bearing washers. I yeah. don't think we'd have oh, on that. No. So nope. they're using, rather than balls, they are using barrels Absolutely. that spin. And that's what this kind of roller system is. They also made a Tanto. I have no idea what the number is. That's a gripe I have for Rook. Uh, maybe we'll save it till the end. But the numbering system instead of the naming system is starting to annoy me. I, yeah. I don't like the inconsistency of it because some of them have names. And yeah. most of them have You numbers. call one a Fang, you call one a Hussar, and then all of a sudden you're just like, no, no. 801. Deal with it. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're going to call it. Like it's, yeah. And there's, I think there's multiple knives with the 801. Like. Well, there's a 108. Mm. That's the thing. And there's a 102. And there's a, like, there's, so the, even it's, the numbers are close enough that they, oh, it's, yeah, it's weird. You want to slap some people. At least with ZT, you know what you're getting. Exactly. Well, and like, there's the, um, the two that we have, the two Sinkovich. And yeah. they're, they're sequentially numbered, so you understand that it's part of the same family. Outside of that, they're very fastly different. Than 450s, 460s. You had the Rexfords, which was the 800 series. Yeah. You had, like, there was there was a rhyme and reason to it. The this seems a little haphazard. Well, I don't know who the designer is. I don't know if it's a family of designers or not. Like, there's no idea yeah. on the rake stuff, because they've only been around for a couple years. And we love that we jumped on board early enough yeah. that... We're getting these good budget knives because let me let me tell you, like they're not a ZT, they're not a bench made. You're paying fifty, sixty, seventy dollars for a rake knife that you should be paying a hundred to hundred and twenty dollars for anywhere else on the market. That's exactly so it. So that's that's the biggest pro out of anything we have to say tonight is the price point on all of these for what you're getting is phenomenal. And when it comes down to that grind and having to fix it, if I'm going to have to fix a grind like that, I'm happy that I'm doing it in Sandvik. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not doing it in 3V or something else like that. It's going to be obnoxious. For the average man, it is a fixable issue. Yeah. And for a man who loves to reprofile knives on a regular basis, I'm looking forward to see what you can do with that because, uh, yeah, I dabble myself. So I'm a little bit critical. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I expect it to be uh, criticized <laughs> at the end. I'm not going to lie. Do we want to move on to another model? Have we said all we have to say? I think we've said enough for now. Okay. I think we Come can back jump to on board. This is the <laughs> P865-B, which is uh, Warncliffe guy. 865? Uh, 865, yeah. Pre in a previous video, I talked about, well, we all talked about this guy. I think it was budget factor, right? Yeah. Um, this knife fixes a lot of this knife's issues. So many of them. Yeah. Not all of them. Yeah. Not all of them. Okay, but that's a Ruick issue. That's not a <laughs> no, no. specifically. There's some other issues with right. this one stuff, too. The thumb stud is better. It's not great. It's a little sharp. Um, uh, I don't even care, deploying it sank into the handle. It could be a but little further out. It's because, better than this. Yeah. Because of the Merlin. Because of the teeth and the because Merlin of the on this knife. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot easier. I mean. Really, the pocket clips are very, or not sorry, the pocket clips are very different, actually. Deep carry pocket clip that's been milled in place. This one is a not-so-deep carry pocket clip that's been milled in place. But um, No lock stabilizer, no secondary lock, which is fine to me. I never, I never really cared. Um, T6s, to take this entire thing apart. That's nice. Dennis <laughs> was good enough to get photos, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll, we'll lippity-blips and pull photos out yeah, mm -hmm. of it skeletonized. Um, um, they did a really nice job with it. Uh, less than two and a half ounces on this guy, like two point four ounces. Let's find out for real. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, well, I want to see. Your mouth is. Here, first, let's see what this guy is. So the older. <coughs> three point two five. Three point two five, and this guy. Two point four six. 
Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's for, for, pretty light knife. for a knife of that size, I mean, you are dealing with a thin handle, thin blade, but it's Full size handle, though. still very and, lightweight. Yeah, 3.5, 3.6 inch on the blade on this guy. So still plenty of cutting length Absolutely. on it. Hi, Luna. How are you doing? She's being noisy right now. So Kitty cat screaming at us. Um, it has, like the rook we just took a look at, or rake, right, sorry. Uh, it also has t uh, little teeth on the uh, lock bar, which is um, very easy to access, but and it doesn't get in the way when I'm cutting. I haven't found a single moment where I'm worried about it uh, accidentally closing on my hand. Um, Super streamlined, very easy to carry in the pocket. Uh, I barely notice that it's there. For its size, I think this is the lightest knife that I have. Um, again, awesome edge on this guy. Absolutely fantastic yeah. polish. Uh, even for lefties, I failed there, but you can finger flick it enough that it's not annoying. Like it's, yeah. So, um, yeah, I actually really, really like it. I want to refer to it as like almost like a budget Osborne. Mm -hmm. And I brought that out just to check it out. No, it's not dual studs, but yeah, it's yeah. <clears throat> got a lot of similarities. And for the, what is the price point? Forty-seven ninety-five. Yep. Man, I can almost remember. Um, <laughs> compared to the obnoxious three seventy or whatever it is, American price or Canadian price point for yeah. that guy. Yeah. Um, almost a perfectly straight blade. There's a very small amount of curve towards the tip here. Um, I found that it there aren't really many tasks where I found it was unsuited. Uh, mm. Cutting through high-density foam recently, uh, shaving wood with it, it was great. Um, I really want one of these. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. Uh, um, I believe this is the only model that does not um, drill the hole onto the left-hand side. This one... Of the does, liner that he's... He's yes. referring to the liners. Um, the other one that you've got, as well as the third one we're going to show here for the 2018 models. Um, That's that little. For, for lefties, they, they mill the holes in the steel liners, which in my head is the hard part, and then still choose not to do the extra milling on the one hand of the scale. Um, the... 865, I hate you, pick names instead of numbers, Rake. Um, the 865 uh, doesn't even have the screws yeah. milled into the back, so they're really ignoring the lefties on this particular knife. Which is kind of a gripe we all have for them as a whole, as a company. It just seems like not a single one of their folders is lefty capable, really. Um, you can't mount the pocket clip on the other side, and in a lot of cases, you can't even switch the thumb stud to the other side. And I just hate the fact that out of all of them, like they they even mill, and I don't think they do on this one because no. it's all a steel frame, right? But on anything with a liner, they even have the internal holes yeah. already tapped to make a left-handed screw, and then they don't drill through the G10 to finish it. And it's like, you guys are almost there. Like, why not give it? There's two guys right here that would probably own a couple more rakes than we actually mm -hmm. do, which is zero right now. And um, I love this company. I'm one of the big reasons why we're actually sitting around right now talking about this company is because I made a big push for our local shop to to get this brand in. And wow, <coughs> they listen to us for yeah. sure. Yeah. As far as things about this particular knife that I like um, artistically, I love <coughs> the way that it's one continuous line all the way from the uh, tip back here by the butt all the way down to this uh, secondary tip on the back end of the blade. Um, it's very consistent. I, I love the way this knife looks, the way it handles. Um, um, it's been called a lot, and even a couple people that we know have called it like a very Higo looking, a very yeah. Japanese style, very yeah. slim, very to the point, even though it is a liner lock, even when it's closed, it has a very like Higo squarish yeah. kind of Asian style to it. Yeah. So. Beauty through simplicity, right? That whole neat, uh, the, the, that whole uh, design aesthetic is very prevalent here. It's a bit of a contrast to this knife where it looks a bit more arts, like artsy, artsy, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. having the having the grind of the blade, the secondary tip match with the scale here, having these milling lines on the side. I kind of like how simplified this knife is. Yeah. 
the reason why I went with this over the other two was honestly for how lightweight it is, the ease of opening and use for as a right-handed user, this is awesome. Um, in my hand, there's plenty of room on the handle, even if I'm squeezing or even spraying my fingers out. Uh, Nigel, how about you? It is still quite very comfy in my hand. Slim, oh, yeah. so you can't get a good like wrap around to do heavy duty work. But I don't think this knife was ever no, intended no, that, to be a heavy duty knife anyway. It's not a heavy duty blade, I mean, really looking at it. And honestly, with the liner of what it is, and it's it's a pretty thin liner. They the for the liner lock itself, it's got solid lock up. Like there's nothing wrong with it. But when you look at the thickness of it compared to us getting spoiled with ZT titanium frame locks. ZT frame locks, like the 4.56. Yeah. This is a really, really thin wire when you're looking at it. Um, a little bit of a gripe, but I don't think it's that big of a gripe, only because it's a gentleman's carry, it's an EDC carry, it's not a heavy-duty carry, so I don't think the liner is affected too much because of what this knife's intended purpose is. I can see this knife absolutely disappearing into a pair of like dress pants, suit mm -hmm. pants, oh. you know what I mean? Like, Speaking of you wouldn't even notice... The point for it disappearing, I'll even use my sleeve here as illustration. Like, it looks like a pen clip. Yeah. It's, in. it's yeah. just gone, yeah. which is super Very awesome. Very not obtrusive. Yeah. I mean, with how lightweight this is, I've I actually mean, uh, I've actually clipped it to my shirt. I mean, um, you could wear it in a shirt pocket. No yeah. I, I even, as a pen. Well, I even had it as a dress shirt. It was just yeah. uh, slipped across my chest uh, while I was doing something else quickly. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. Like, that sits there quite nicely. I have a quick gripe about the backspacer. When we took the knife apart and we did show one internal picture, I don't know if we're going to show all of them there or we're going to wait till now to show the other internal picture of the backspacer. Um, there is, and I don't know if we can get an inside view of the inside of that handle. Zoom in on that. But there is three pins on the back side there. And I think... Yeah, you can see them. Yeah, yeah, more or less we can see them there. Um... My gripe is, is that the G10 is very inconsistent on how much it's covering each one of those pins. And I did look from uh, a, a, a number of different iterations of this particular model, and the backspacers <coughs> were worn in to different degrees. Some where they looked nice and, and clean, and there wasn't any hang-ups um, on this particular model, and you guys just saw on camera, but... The far pin and the far pins, the one in the center is relatively clean, but on either side it's a little. And I don't know if you've seen it yet, but um, yeah, the, the, it just doesn't look like the machining had done a complete pass, or maybe it was just off by like less than a millimeter, but in, enough that it shows. And then that pin be like inside the tin. You would it, think it is. <laughs> well, see, it is um, like completely hidden. Below the yeah, it you want to wrap around. So, you would think. Yes. and you'll, you guys on YouTube will see in the pictures, but for Paul. Um, Basically, the, the spacer continues off the sides of my hands here, so yeah. it's still hugging the pins. I and between that. three of them, there's enough strength that it should prevent any kind of dislodging. Um, it but, would be nicer if they were completely inset, but then you'd have to make the handle wider, so to keep this design with those lines. It, you could have made this handle just a little bit wider to hide the blade a little bit better, too. Maybe, maybe but this I like, had the same kind of fit up as this guy does. Yeah. So you know what we're yeah. talking about. No, I completely yeah. understand where... Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that's the theory behind it, right? But my other kind of confusion on it is we've got a stop pin here, which is a suspended stop pin, and then one of the screws, the second one here, is actually not threaded to anything at all. It's also a suspended stop pin. Then the two back screws are actually internally threaded, and there's more screws underneath. And you can see that in all the internal pictures that we're showing everyone, right? Okay. It is an oddity. I have no idea why they chose for this second one to be a stop pin rather than a screw. Um, Probably because they could get away with it. Because, And I don't mean that and get away with something bad, but I just mean that... You don't need in, you, you know. don't need the strength of a full screw, so why waste the resources of using screws and uh, you know? I I guess, but it's very very minimal. It could. It's... My other thought too is that the thickness of the uh, uh, the female portion of the screw would probably be too wide for the forward portion because that backspacer does thin out the closer you get to the pivot. So they probably needed a thinner stock piece. But that's also my second argument is why can't they have those pins slightly higher up and fully encapsulated in the G10 like Paul pointed out. Because they probably they would need to make it wider. Like a lot of higher-end yeah. companies have done, right? 
I think so, I think they just came up with the design. And I forget if it was one of you guys who said this, but somebody had said to me that it's kind of like um, the design team is separate from the engineering team. Yeah, I mentioned that when we were chatting yeah. about it yeah, yeah, yeah. when we were taking it apart there. I, I mentioned that, and yeah, someone designed it, and then someone tried to make it, and they're like, "Oh, we got to do this. We got to shave this out to to make this work, and we got to." turn that into a thinner screw and because these two are slightly bigger making this the same size as the stop pin yeah. making it smaller is a good way to get the curve in there to make it close properly right yeah but it's not like it closes like all symmetrically no. beautifully anyway so making it that much bigger yeah making it a few millimeters wider i don't know I'd, centering I'd it to, again still i'd have to hold both versions to decide which i liked more the hypothetical version or this one but because this is what's in front of us and because this is what I liked, I did end up picking it up. Oh, yeah. um, I'm going to pick one of those up for sure. I do like that those screws that we talked about are completely covered by the G10 handles, which are very wonderfully milled out to further reduce weight. It's not only are the uh, G10 uh, scales hollowed out to accept the liners, which are skeletonized, but there's further milling <coughs> to hide the screws. Like, I just I love that. Um, Maybe if this was a stonewashed finish, I'd be a little bit happier with it instead bead, of the bead blasting. Bead blasting's a bit of a gripe. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really had this long enough to say that, oh yeah, I'm rusting this one out too, but I have a feeling that I'll, I might be able to do it. I wouldn't be surprised. Hi, Luna. That's a loud kitty. Yeah, she tried to be a loud kitty. But only one this time, though, yeah. so we're good. All right, so I think... Yeah, I think it's about time we got on to the, uh, the finale. <laughs> Last but not least, um, one that no one has picked up yet, but I'm really, really tempted to. This is the 848-P something B. Dash B. Dash B. Still a 14C. 28. Um, one thing everyone will probably notice right off the bat, um, no thumb disc, no thumb stud, no flippy flippy, no nothing. We got nail nicks. Um, it's my one grab at this time. And it is an old school opener. And yet it still rides very smoothly on captured ball bearings. No, try again. It's not ball bearings. Oh, sorry, thrust swashers. We went over this. Roller bearings. Yes. Sorry. And then they, you they are at me for yeah, the Yeah, but they, they are they are captured <laughs> bearings. They're still captured bearings. They're just not roller bearings. Tubes that roll. <laughs> and that's what they do. Yeah. And it's so smooth. Like, the drop shot that you can get on this knife is very impressive. Especially mm. for the price. Now, I would love to be able to finger flick this right now, or everyone... Top flipper, yeah. It, in the, we did talk about this. Yeah. Having a flipper or a front flipper for this design would just be... Ew. But before the hypotheticals, um, the actual knife itself, I'd love it. The streamlined look of it... It is actually my favorite knife visually. Out of the three that we've shown. Yeah. The blue liners that they have on that, and I don't know if we can get a zoom in on that too, because the blue, they did a really awesome job on anodizing the blue. Can we get it? I don't know if we can get the blue or not. Yeah, there you go. You got some glint. Oh, yeah, all the glinty action. Okay. Um, oh, you can kind of see a little bit more clearly on the inside of the uh, yeah, walk bar yeah, there. Yeah. Um, I do like that the blue's there. I am mildly concerned that it'll wear away just as the thumb stud on this model wore away over time. But this is getting constant. Yeah, use, look, at, right? look at your pivot. Yeah, the pivot's fine, but that's also captured. There's you can't actually directly touch this. And this is not going to be getting rub and wear. Uh, maybe a little bit. Maybe a by the thumb. Like, but for its intention of use as like a gentlemanly sort of carry. Yeah, it's it, a nail neck knife, right? Yeah. Like it's yeah. Oh, I like it. I like it so much. And closed, it's fully encapsulated as well. It, uh, it's in a the knife. pocket. It is the nicest looking knife. That's what I was going to say, is that all the gripes I have about that knife is wishing it fit together like this. <laughs> yeah, fair I, enough. I like that blade shape. I like everything about it. I like this one too. But this same knife, to fit into the, the handle like that, would be perfect. If they refined this one a little bit yeah, more and just make it. Yeah, yeah. That kind of quakeny feel. So yeah. Yeah. while we're doing this thing, let's get them all up there. This is the reason why we're here. Is the three <coughs> mid year twenty eighteen release that Rate came out with. And all of them seem to be a pretty big winner. I'm just noticing right now the fact that that one doesn't have uh, its name on its clip. Oh. Compared to the other two. It yeah. does not have the branding. Yeah. Or yeah. 
So I wonder if this is just that's something they're doing with a deep carry. That's because it's already announcing its presence by not being <laughs> deep carry. And it's like, blam, it's a knife. Whereas these guys are like anyone who knows Rake is like, hey, that's a knife. <laughs> that's, that's not all knife. So obviously I liked this one the most. Obviously you liked this one the most. At least that was the one that you gravitated initially. Initially, I need this knife. I, since I got that one... I like that one. I also want this one. We know Dennis likes that. It's my favorite out of all three. If Hands Nigel, if if Nigel had to it. pick one, which would it be? Why? That guy. For the slim gentlemanly sort of... Um, heard one gentleman I know refer to it as a techno puko. Oh my god, yes it is. <laughs> yeah. That's and so great. I just like the combination and the contrast of the kind of slim, sleek, traditional sort of, but then with the blue and the styling of it, it's <coughs> definitely very modern. It's almost like a Puko and a Quaken kind of had a mm-hmm. A little bit. Yeah. Just the way it tucks away into the handle. And I think for me, ultimately, like other than the styling of it, the nail nick is kind of a little bit of a con. They could make it a front flipper, they could make mm-hmm. it a back flipper yeah. even. But ultimately, a knife is made for cutting, and this one in my hand yeah. feels, feels great. by far the best out of all three offerings. Also, so the most neutral handle out of the three. Sometimes we forget about styling on a knife, and we forget that a knife is ultimately meant to cut something in your hand and meant to feel good in your hands. One thing that I've said numerous times, and I don't know if I've ever said it on camera, but I've said it to you guys numerous times, when you have an exposed liner, I usually find that to be a kind of like a cheap feature in like cheaper knives. This is the first knife that I've ever handled that did it right in my mind. How dare you bad talk the Gale Bradley? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know what I mean. Like this one, it's Joe owns one too. It's double insulting, even though he's not speaking up right now. Well, he I, it. I could dig one out. I didn't want to shake the camera. But So why is it? Is it because it's the offset blue with the black? Or? Yeah, it's a really nice The blue contrast. and the black is a nice combo. They also did a really, really good job of having a very small amount that exposed. It's not mm. too much. It's yeah. just a hint of, hey, what's that? Usually on a cheap knife, they're not rounded off. Like These ones are nice and rounded and smoothed out. Yes, they definitely went through a tumbler or they got radius yeah. somehow. That's it. So they did that feeling right, and it looked really nice. It does. I fully intend to own one, but the lack of one-handed opening meant that I was more attracted to something like this. 100%. Yeah, it. And as far as your guys' gripes about the fact that it's a two-handed opening, it's got no studs or anything like that, that's the intention of design. Of course, It yeah. was designed as a no accidental, nothing to snag on, no way to have it pop open in your pocket or anything like that. Yeah. My issue's not with that. My issue is the fact that I don't have fingernails, so trying to open <laughs> it is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no fingernails, and it's not... It, okay, it's a little painful. It's a struggle. But yeah. Once you get there, it's okay. I think the other thing with the design on this knife, and it's the whole philosophy behind the knife and the two-handed opening, mm-hmm. is is slowing down. Yeah. And yeah. again, the, the ergonomics, rather than the opening mechanism, I love thumb studs. I love spidey holes. I, I, I hate flippers, but that's a whole <laughs> different goddamn topic. Um, this knife puts you into away from it all and it's strictly about how this knife cuts at that point in time. It slows you down, and I think People in general need to take a life lesson. This is the life lesson moment of the pokey factor. Oh, God. Is is slow down. (laughs) Slow down. Enjoy your moment. Enjoy the knife. Don't stop and smell the roses. Stop and nail nick your knife. Yeah. (laughs) Reach out and cut something. Right? Like it's... (laughs) Well, just not me. I'm cool with it. I got Nigel last week. Someone else is due. Yeah, yeah, I've already had my turn. If I cut myself gently, does it does it count or no? no. <laughs> it has to be an accident. Unexpected, uh, accidental. Someone on, else on camera that will clean the blood up later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So fair enough. Um, oh, I'll cut you later, Jeff. So the, thank you. So this also has all T sixes to disassemble. I love that. My only gripe is recently I had to take a knife apart that was a lot of T sixes, and I broke two. No, sorry, three T sixes. Oh, I would prefer to have T eight. Okay. This is, and not T10s, because that's a little overkill. Yeah, but T8s I, would be nice. T8s would be nice. And I forgot to mention the scrape earlier, and you may have seen it in the disassembly photos, but with this guy, there was I, I when we took this apart, there was so much Loctite, I nearly oh, stripped yeah. out this screw. I had to take a heat gun oh. to it, press super hard, re-grind my T6 that I 
like it was crazy the amount that they had in there. Yeah. Yes, I have two T6s yeah. at home. I'm gonna have to regrind to get them. Crazy back. amount of mm-hmm. T6s. T8. Or, um, lock type. Lock type. Yeah. Sorry. And yeah. I mean, a T8 would allow uh, greater stability through more material. So I agree. A T8, a T, a full T8 assembly would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do like the fact that it's all one. Yes, for, at least yeah, it's all consistent. We're not getting... We, okay, maybe that's a bad example. I, I kind of <laughs> like that, but we're not getting weird shit where it's all different from each other. Now, the other thing we haven't mentioned on is no bearings. We've got thrust roller bearings. We've got single bronze, I think, on this one. Bronze on one side? You've taken it apart. Yeah, I thought there was still support washers on either side as well. Oh, okay. So also a double washer system, which yeah. is also what this is working with. And we've got the picture. If you didn't see it in the first picture, it's another picture. I actually really like washers because if crap gets in there, it's less likely to get in between the washer and the blade and the handle. I, I like that. I've had it where barrel ball bearing knives have gotten crap and gunk into them, and it's just a bit of a pain to disassemble. Even when they're caged, I've had issues. What are you doing to your nose? Well, if it's I'm, Joe. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. Let's yeah. see if there's any rust on this M390 right now. There, there might be a spot or two. I haven't been cleaning it recently. No, it's good. It's okay. Good. But even M390, it's not safe from Joe. No. Uh, and I'm not. I'm not so much worried about like uh, that kind of rust. It's more like if I'm, uh, I don't know, like working in the garden or if I'm working on a construction project with my dad, and then crap gets in the pivot. I'm less worried about this than Do I am. Dig it with your knives. Bead, mean you blasting it? blades as well. Yeah, more for sure. And I've yeah. seen 1428 Sandvik, uh, leak, Kershaw leaks, things like that with bead blasting, and I have seen them get rust on them. Jen's G, or, uh, VG10 rock had spotted pits. Yeah, yeah, VG10. Yeah. Which is just you know, insane. Aussie. Is that Aussie? Yeah. Or BD1. Yeah, Aussie. And it's had it? Oh, yeah, it's got it right now. Yeah, I've seen I've seen Aussie go as well. Um, it's got spots all in there. But it was just shocking to see. a spot all in there. All right, then. <laughs> it was just shocking for me to see VG10 like that. So maybe 14C? I don't know. Um, I will report back with my findings. I wouldn't be surprised if you paused that blade. <laughs> also, so, small grape on this guy, uh, super thin liner as well. But again, gentlemanly knife. And yet, for what it's intended, it's not a hard-use knife. Um, and it doesn't need to be thicker because the other one matches and the accents on it, I think, are perfect just the way it is. Um, but as far as a knife concern goes, when you look at, oh, man, even these two yeah, next yeah. to each other. like That's another thing we, that really got me for this knife is I the, like a thick lighter. The lockup on the, what is yours, the number of the stupid numbers that Drake has? 852. Yes. The 852 is significantly bigger than the 848 and the 8. 55, 65. 65. Damn numbers. <laughs> ZT had numbers first. Pick your own game. Yeah. No, I'm not even kidding. ZT <laughs> can get away with it because they've been playing this game longer than anyone with the numbers. We've also That's spoken it. about the fact that they anyway. do a better job with the numbers. The but numbering system. Benchmade doesn't have numbers very often that don't have names attached to it. Okay, that's fair. They all have numbers, but they all, if you look them up, and sometimes they refer to names, and sometimes they refer to numbers. Again, Rake, uh, for left-handed users and for people who want to call their names specific things, not their names, just a number. (laughs) Oh, but you could have so many awesome names. Like, even the the, what we've got... Hego. Just call it (laughs) Hego. For what we've got sitting here, you can come up with very easy names for all of these... I don't know who you've got for designers making these, but like, let them have their names on it, or maybe that's the secret. Yeah, could if, be. If you did put the names on them, it might give away who's actually designing these <laughs> because they're coming from the San Remo factory, right? Yeah. Like, so it could be part yeah. of it. Who knows? Who knows? Um, it's annoying. And the left-handed clip, again, they threaded this one. Um, I am thinking I am going to own this one, and I'm thinking that I am going to make it left-handed whether Rake wants me to or not. <laughs> to hell with him. Um, I will be drilling through your G10 and machining out and hopefully sanding, cutting out, and trying to make it a lefty clip because the holes are there in the liner, and it wants to happen. Get yourself a tiny chisel. <laughs> oh, I will. I will. I've got to have a lot. <laughs> so are we upset? Uh, actually, uh, this is more of a question for you guys. Do you know if these come with any other color variations, or is it all black G10 across the board? Um, right now they've put the B variation on for black, Yeah. but 
that only means that they can basically come out with whatever color they want, and they can put a G on Ooh. the end of it. They can put uh, yeah. a deep royal purple. I mean, it's wow. G10. They won't do anything with it. They'll have to modify it to like an aluminum or something like that to actually put colors onto it. I think so. Uh, I'd like to see these in colored variations. I guess. I, think I guess their Canto had and their Fang had blue, and mm -hmm. they might do handle variations, but. I don't know. This guy I'm really digging with black and blue. Oh, well, the, 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 the contrast is the awesome. Johnny Cash in me loves what's going on there. <laughs> the it's, artistry in that knife is the nicest one on the table. Yes, sure. it is. Yeah, I'll reiterate that. Yeah, definitely the nicest looking. Yeah. Um, and I think most universally loved in handle grip. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think so. This guy is also very good, but it's very thin in the hand. Um, but that's definitely more hand filling. It's a little bit thicker too, yeah. isn't it? More rounded, wider. I quite like it. And even with the thinner liner lock. I was just kind of like that. <laughs> I wish that knife had a thumb stud. That's the only thing that I wish. I, that would ruin yeah. the lines of the knife, though. I mean, like, yeah, part right. of the reason why I like it so much is there's nothing going on to really throw it off. I'm going to hold the blade. Ooh, I don't know. So I can put a... No, because then you'd have to machine out the G10. Mm -hmm. Put enough. a hole in the blade. Mm -hmm. That's not going to fly. If front slipper is the way to go. Front, it, yeah, it really yeah. is. Turning this thing into a front slipper is not going to ruin the style on it. There's, uh, there's room for it. Right up in here. Plenty Make of a little carpenter right tab that's a little that hey, so hey, hey with the hey, hey. And it'll kick nice. Where's yeah. it he said? Yes. Multiple hays. To the hey, hey. So this one does have a T8 here. Okay. T8. Um, polish is phenomenal on all three edges. That's yep. something that I yep. had to notice on the 1428. Um, this guy here, even though it was misground on the backside, the mirror edge that was on this, and you dropped it a little bit, but... Yeah. Because it's a thicker knife as well, and someone didn't bring calipers, but that's okay. We'll slap them around after it's over. I'm looking forward um, to it. Behind the edge, it's probably a little thicker, and that's why the bevel's a little bit higher on this guy yeah. as well. And the bevel really bleeds on him. I will say this one also came a little bit misground. Um, not, a, not a problem, because after sharpening it once, most of the issue was gone. Um, it did not affect cutting performance. It felt great. I'm thinking about getting some diamond paddles and really thinning out that, ed that edge a little bit. Get a little more slicey. Mm -hmm. That might be a thing to do. Wheel shark it proper, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's. I don't know what that means. But <laughs> I. I'm glad that we're on the same page. Uh, uh, yeah, we're talking about <laughs> big and doesn't eat meat. I don't it, know. It's not up here, but I want to do the same thing with my hussar. It's a little thick behind the edge. Doesn't cut so nice. Yeah, and I guess I. Yeah, I, I owned a hussar for a while, and again, that's why we're here. But yeah. Anyway, um, overall. Really like what they're doing. Um, extra large hands probably wouldn't fit this guy. Uh, extra large hands would probably love this, but we all got to remember that these two are light duty knives. They're not heavy duty. The liner on this guy, you could probably go to town on. You can remove definitely. the imaginary thumb disc before you baton with it because Cold Steel says so. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> what? You didn't know there was an imaginary thumb disc on the top of that? No, knife? there's an imaginary thumb stud, and it's right there. Well, yeah, it's right there. Yeah. Anyway, ruin my thumb disc. <laughs> you can pull off a thumb stud the same way. Not without damaging it. It's ruined. It's ruined. We're <laughs> ruined. All right. I think we've pretty much covered all the ground we can cover with these guys. I think so. um, yeah. Any closing thoughts? Or? Okay, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, except the F-bomb part. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Um, yeah, opening this much improved, and we've been talking about that for a while, that they're not technically the same knife, but you can almost call them the same knife, and so much more of an improvement. I'm so happy that they came up with this, <laughs> so we can kick this knife to the curb. <laughs> I'm sad that I spent money on it, because that's so much better. Yeah, and I'm you also bought that. Too, but so, actually, um, that being said, having this sort of evolved into this design, is there any? are there any Rook... Rake uh, knives out there that you guys would like to see transformed in a similar way, improved upon, or this turned into that. <laughs> well, okay, but fair enough. It's hard to say. Um, just, just the handle, just fattening up the handle a little bit. I'd the I'd like to see the 801 do some sort of um, skeletonization, some sort of lighter G10 model, but still a thin G10 model hmm. would be kind of nice for that 801, and take it away from the Sabenza look-alike looking thing, but make it its own, but at the same time, maybe throw anodizing on the liners like this guy. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. I think the 801 is an awesome platform, and I'd <laughs> like to see variations on it, and I 
Can you get it in black? Yeah, I think you can. The 801 you can get in black, and so, but I mean, again, a G10, something like that. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Variations on something else in the rake lineup? No, I, I don't know. <laughs> Nothing really comes to mind, frankly. Yeah, not off the top of my head without looking at them and comparing. Yeah, yeah on okay. the spot, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not usually into them all that much, but like the heavy Tonto that they have with a slightly more like ergonomic handle. Where the it's Tesla, right? Yeah, yeah. Where it's not so squared off in the hand. It'd be, It'd be kind of nice to see an Americanized Tonto blade from them that isn't so blocky. Yeah. I like that blockiness. Like, I, I like that blade. I mean, the blocky handle. Blocky, blocky handle's just... It's too uncomfortable. A mini fang. A mini fang might be cool. A skinnier yeah. thing. This? Yeah, a fang, like, with just narrowed down to match sort of like that kind of... I think that could be cool. No, but like a fang. A fang doesn't look like this. It looks like a no, fang. No, no, I'm saying a fang, the, a fang that's a fang. The fang. The fang. It's the fang. But, but the, the, yeah, skin, skin <laughs> this way, because I like the length on it, but I, yeah, skin It's here. the blue and black, and it's the big leaf-bladed one, and it may be a picture. I'll see what I can do. Like a first. delicate-sized version of it kind of thing? Well, yeah. Yeah, that or would be Or cool. like Big Barrage versus Mini Barrage, or yeah. Big Onslaught versus Mini Onslaught, just a slightly, like, it's, yeah, just a, a cool variation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's hypothesizing. Yeah. Um, to round out, I think all good options. XLs probably won't like this. I think I said that once, because yeah. I was trying mm -hmm. to close up once. But then we got sidetracked, and we were talking some more for another 10 minutes. So we should probably sign off and uh, say, you buy these knives. They're, yeah. they're good knives. Can't go wrong. Good budget knives. If any of them tickles your fancy for style, you'll probably like them in the long run. And for you, those of you ordering online, they're, I mean, geez, they're cheap enough that you should have no problems grabbing one for, uh, for not very much. I'll still say there's some stuff budget-wise, CRKT... Steel wheel, things like that, uh, mm -hmm. budget-wise, that will compare with these ones. So pick what you like, ultimately, but these are definitely some good offerings for budget stuff without going into yeah. the, the elitism that we normally share. Play, yeah. So, yeah. All right. Signing off. Signing off. Signing off. No one else did it. No, I, I didn't know no there's, there's reasons. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, signing off. Uh, glad we... We're here around the table. Uh, thanks to the Cutting Edge for donating the this guy to us tonight for our review. Uh, Paul and Joseph already own these guys, so we did get this one donated for the channel tonight. So thanks again to the Cutting Edge for doing that for us. Probably not too soon. Do it. Mm -hmm. That was almost quiet enough that no one heard you. That's yep. good. That's good. I'm probably gonna own that one at some point. There. Awesome. Yeah, those are words. As you should. Then pricks. <laughs> <laughs> to avoid run, the runtime getting any longer. So yeah, signing off. Uh, Nigel is Smith saying goodbye for now. Uh, I am who I am. I'm Dennis Fibers. I am the Iron Joe. And I'm um, XL.ca. Take care. Catch you again later. Thanks, guys. Bye now.